Citizen journalism has been a term used to describe the participatory nature of citizens in influencing the media and news agenda. The use of mobile phones, blogs, social platforms like Twitter and Facebook has given citizens the voice and tools to participate in the ecology of news and be active actors in the news manufacturing process. The media landscape has changed tremendously. Web 2.0 is a typical term used to describe a variety of websites and applications that allow anyone to create and share online information or material they have created. It describes a many-to-many -many relationship where everyone is capable of being a sender and influences communication flow and the ecosystem in our society and the media landscape. I have seen a number of interesting stories surfacing on our local news outlets recently. While this is not something unusual, there is a certain pattern in which we receive our news now. How we interact with these sources in turn shape our sense of social realities and perceptions about issues and topics happening in Singapore and all around the world. We coin terms like unbridged, sovereign lady, the masked lady for the purpose of finding a common language which we could all resonate and share. It is safe to say that news items are like coffee shop talk with an ephemeral nature. As humans, we are constantly searching for interesting and evolving topics to discuss with our soulmates. And in fact, what else can we talk about if we do not talk about politics, entertainment, food, gossips, travel, family, and of late, COVID-19? Through such discourses, we make meaning of our own life and how we intend to journey to the end. The advent of social media has definitely changed the playing field. The notion that everyone's a publisher suggests a fundamental change in the role of the media, shifting gear towards a participatory culture, one that is co-created with our audiences. There has been a lot of discussions about the attention economy, the premise of social media focusing on generating and creating attention for the purpose of advertising. The statement, if you're not paying as a customer, then you are the customer, reveals the hidden agenda of big tech companies in conditioning customers and letting them be glued to social platforms through ideologies like finding fame and success with growth in followers and engagement and the democratization of structures and power. The work culture describes the mentality of the newer generation and how they embark on knee-jerk reactions when they face pertinent issues discussed on the media. The notion that everyone is working could potentially describe the warped and inflated sense of entitlement and empowerment one gets with technology. In fact, who could we blame when there have been a lot of successful movements and ground-up initiatives won against the traditional establishments? The notion that change is possible suggests that if we were to do something about our situation, then there's hope. While such mindsets are excellent in breaking existing prejudices, norms and beliefs, and give the sideline more power and voices, we have also unfortunately bred a whole new generation of digital natives who behave and operate in a totally new way and dimension. This is the culture which we all have to be accountable and responsible for. Are we a byproduct of the media or the media is a byproduct of us? I wonder. There have been too many mass communication theories and studies focusing on the power of media and its effects on audiences. Increasingly, it seems that the evolution of media, namely from print to radio, radio to TV, TV to internet, and internet to social media, has given rise to different audiences with every change. The medium is a message by Marshall McLuhan suggests that the medium is more important than the content. And with every fundamental change in every technology, new meanings of the medium are triggered and evoked. Everyone is a publisher, so it seems. We have given too much power in our own hands. The tech companies want the entire population to be on their platforms. The attention that we give to such platforms are then sold to big conglomerates and companies willing to trade money for our attention. This is the end goal for a capitalistic reason, to bring profits for the investors, to get more users in the, and get the whole world writing, the whole world responding, the whole world interacting and become a global village. How about the traditional newsmakers like journalists, editors you might ask? In fact, media companies and practitioners have been adjusting to this new norm. There has been a democratization of content and structures and an erosion of professional ethics and practice in the field of journalism. Media companies are losing attention to alternative media outlets which are faster in producing bite-sized and viral content. Traditional journalists are challenged with constant expectations of quality journalism and consumers' mistrust over reports which are partial towards the elites and government. In fact, alternative news sites are providing a lighter source of news 
one which is easier to digest with traces of entertainment. Yes, the entire media industry is adjusting. In fact, I could see radio stations turning to Facebook Live to capture more online audience. Traditional news sites bowing towards lower brow content to suit the taste and preference of the growing online community. Actors and hosts resorting to live streaming and selling to make ends meet. Trivial matters are discussed more as there's lesser pressure on the numbers of news hosts available online. Everyone is in search of virality, so it seems. What might we have become? Perhaps a growing ecology and systems of finding news that are of the lowest common denominator. Dramas, scandals, controversies, bad news are excellent content which trigger responses. Humans react to such news well even when we trace back to history. The death of Princess Diana, the growing hate towards Donald Trump, the assassinations of John and Robert Kennedy, the Kardashian family and its fortunes, Tiger Woods affair and the list just goes on. If we do not have a common enemy, then we will all be bored. We need a common enemy to bring us all together. And who might this common enemy be? Islamophobia? Immigrants? Communism? Racism? COVID-19? Government? It is a juxtaposition of many affairs that's pushed up to the pedestal. Bingo, you found the perfect person for the next episode, YouTube video, next blog post of viral hits. And we better strike the iron while it's hot before it becomes old news. Scope, it seems, could be found anywhere as long as there's virality on social platforms like alternative news sites like Mothership and TSL will be quick to jump in the bandwagon. Slowly, news sites like CNA Straits Times will also succumb to it by picking it up and making the news even more legit and official. The role of social commentators should also be explored. Social commentators, be they influencers, YouTubers or bloggers, are constantly finding content to talk about. This is called transporting from a marketing and programming standpoint. Finding trending issues and matters and have our views aligned to gather maximum impact and traction. Participants do not just get more leverage in views and exposure. A contentious topic when discussed could spark off more controversies and discussions, which in turn makes it even a perfect formula for an explosive outcome. And since social commentators have tons of followers, their views perpetuate the beliefs of the majority, which in turn create a vicious cycle of audiences and content creators who are constantly seeking and validating such mode of media consumption and production. In the long run, it becomes a self-propagating machine without much filters in ensuring good quality content and messages we receive. Does the media truly influence us now? Or are we becoming the pervasive influence ourselves? Paradoxically, have we become a powerful medium with the power of the pencil to draw any form of illustration? Drawing as opposed to writing is much more open and leave to the human mind to imagine and interpret. Are tech companies killing all traditional media companies and turning everyone into this lowest common denominator medium we see every day? And if we are the news ourselves, why do we need news? I ask myself. <laughs>